Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show. Before I say anything, I, I am really, really stoked about the Seahawks. Not only did they get in the playoffs, they guaranteed themselves, secured themselves home field advantage. And if any one of you have ever been to a Seahawks game, you know that's a huge advantage with the 12, 12th man. The audience expands. They are raucous. Makes it really hard for the other team. So I'm excited about that. We'll see who they have to play. Sorry I've been away for a little bit. The holidays kind of made it hectic for me. The store was very busy. We sold a ton of wine, a ton of booze, lots of beer. It was very busy. So I wasn't able to get um, go, anything going until today. But I'm happy to be here. And today we're going to talk about how a wine critic breaks down a wine before they either score it or on my on my place grade it. And I talked to a couple of people about it and they thought that would be a really cool thing to do. So I, I, that's what I'm going to do. I know you've watched a couple of these. you watch what I say about the wine. But what are we looking for in a wine that helps it to get a higher grade? Or what is it in a wine that makes it get a lower grade? I, I'm going to do two whites today and I'm going to do, hopefully, hopefully do two reds tomorrow. And they're two entirely different styles of whites. We're going to do a Sauvignon Blanc from uh, Lake County, and we're going to do a Chardonnay from Monterey County. And in each of these varietals, we look for different things. Now, I also talked to another person who gets involved in judging wines, uh, where they give them gold medals and so forth. And there's a little bit of a different approach in judging a wine in that format and how a critic might do it. For instance, as an example, take a wine where two wine critics, like Robert Parker, Junior will give a wine 94 points. And then the same wine is given 89 points by Stephen Tanzer. Now that happens more often than not. So it's obvious that there's some, obviously wine is subjective and there's some subjectivity. This person argued with me a little bit about that, um, saying, well, you know, there's typicity, you know, what type of wine it is, it should fit in those categories. But no matter how hard we try, we still have subjectivity. Um, it's still, uh, we still know what we like, what we're looking for in a wine, and that affects our grade, our score. So let's go to the first one. I uh, don't know if you remember Shannon Ridge. We did this one as a, this is a 2012 Shannon Ridge Sauvignon Blanc. This rolls in at about $15. Let's give the the um, wine, the glass a little rinse here. Excuse me for just one second. I'll be right back. Thank you. So, what are we looking for? What am I looking for in a Sauvignon Blanc? Now, I mentioned a few times that I have what I call a retail palette. And as a retail palette, uh, I'm looking not only for a wine to have typicity, in other words, it should taste like a Sauvignon Blanc, not like a Chardonnay or a uh, Chenin Blanc or something like that, although it might be closer to that. Um, no, what I'm looking for is a wine that will sell to 80% of the people that try it. In other words, if I stack this wine in the store, I'm looking for a wine that... You know, I, I believe that 80% of the people that buy it will like it. So that angle changes things just a little bit. I have what I call, and I'm not bragging or you can call it whatever you want, but I have what I call an open-minded palate. I don't stick to s certain things. Although, you know, the, I like rustic wines, I like big juicy fat wines sometimes, but all of those wines have to have certain things in them to make them a good wine. For instance, Sauvignon Blanc should have a strong acid base. In other words, it should have good acidity. That's what you're looking for in a Sauvignon Blanc. Now, I know not everybody is looking for that in a Sauvignon Blanc. Some people are settled for the kind of flabby, you know, watered-down versions. And that's, that's okay, but when you're looking at grading a Sauvignon Blanc, what are you looking for? First thing is good acidity. Second thing is good flavors. You can have a lot of acid, and then yet that acid overrides the flavors. So you want certain flavors to come out. A Sauvignon Blanc is known to be grassy, shows a lot of kiwi fruit, 
lime, lemon, citrus notes. Those are very key things in a good Sauvignon Blanc. You're also looking for balance in a wine. In other words, yeah, it has to have acid, yes. Yes, it has to have fruit. It has to have good structure. In other words, those things have to integrate together to give you a very delicious, satisfying feel in the mouth. You don't want it to be herky-jerky. You don't want to get a little, you don't, don't want to get oak coming through too strong. You don't want it acid so strong that you can't taste fruit. You don't want it to be this fruit so strong that it uh, overrides other elements of the wine that are so key in a good Sauvignon Blanc. I have trouble with Sauvignon Blancs from Cali. Uh, I've hard to find a good California Sauvignon Blanc. I found one a couple of years ago at Ladera up on Howe Mountain. Fantastic Sauvignon Blanc. I've ran across a few, especially in particular in um, <laughs> Happy Canyon Appalachian near Santa, uh, Santa Inez. Some fantastic Sauvignon Blancs coming out of there. This is from Clear Lake, um, so we'll give it a whirl. Let's see what we have on the nose. So here I get a little bit of grapefruit, which is another common citrus note of Sauvignon Blancs. The nose to me is important, but at the same time, I've had some fantastic wines that uh, don't have a uh, much on the nose at all until you put them in your mouth. So smell is key. It, we certainly want our wines to smell good, but at the same time that isn't the key element. Because let's face it, I get a little bubble gum on this. Now the other thing I was going to talk about with white wines also is how warm should it be when you grate it. Now I know there's been a guy in the past that was passionate about drinking white wines close to room temperature. I understand where you're coming from on that one because you know a lot of the elements of the wine start showing themselves when that wine warms up. But I can guarantee you and you guys can back me up on this on the comments if you'd like, most people drink their whites cold. Isn't that true? I mean I, I, would, guarantee, I would be willing to bet that at least 75 percent of the people that drink white wines like to drink them cold. So what I try to do is strike a balance between that. I don't want it ice cold, certainly because you can't get nearly as much out of the wine, but I'm not going to go towards room temperature because I do not believe that's what the person is drinking and therefore those flavors, those aromas, those things are not coming out for them. So when I write a descriptor on my wine, I want it to be as close to possible as what those persons are experiencing. So these wines aren't super cold, they're not close to room temperature, they're sort of in between. So I'm getting a little grapefruit, a little bubble gum. I get some uh, uh, little dusty element on this one. I even get, I'm getting a little bit of a like a coconut thing, like coconut bubble gum. How's that? Let's see what we get. So right off, this wine has good balance. It has another thing that you're looking for a lot of times in whites, and that's minerality. Sorry guys, someday that's going to be in the dictionary. I mean, if selfie can be in the dictionary, certainly minerality can be in there. So I'm getting a little minerality. I get a little bit of um, grassiness on the back side, which I like. It's something you're looking for in a Sauvignon Blanc. A, a little bit of grapefruit, but it's balanced by other citrus notes, a little kiwi action going on. There's good acid. I'd like to see just a little bit more, because you see what the acid does is it pops the fruit notes. That's your backbone. That's what makes those fruit notes pop up in your palate. This one has a nice creaminess in the mid palate. I like that. This has good balance all the way through. It kind of flows nicely across the palate. Um, could use a little more acid, but I'm not going to be that picky at $15. This is a pretty good wine. Well balanced. Nice, um, like I said, it has all the elements. It has a good finish. That's another thing with whites, is how long does that finish linger on the backside? And all of those things we put together as critics, and we say, okay, I'm going to give this Sauvignon Blanc a B plus. Now, I would have given it an A- minus if it would have had just a little bit more acid. B- plus is still a good grade for this wine. 
it has a could use just a little more flavor. I'm liking this wine. I think it's very good. That grapefruit kind of pithiness, that pithy being the you know the little pulpiness on the skin. Yeah, that's hanging around. Yeah, that's definitely a strong B plus. Maybe hedging towards A minus. Good bottle of wine. Shannon Ridge has been really, really uh, impressing me lately. Let's give this a rinse here. The other thing is whether you should taste wines blind in a blind format, or should you be able to see them as a wine critic. I know the Wine Spectator gives a lot of, puts a lot on that. They say they taste all of them blind. I know a story behind that. I'm not going to share it. This one is a um, Shalom Vineyards, Monterey County, 2011 Chardonnay. Now, believe it or not, Chardonnay is still the number one selling varietal in the United States. Second is Cabernet Sauvignon. So, there's a lot of Chardonnay sold on the market. This is the biggest section in my department is Chardonnay. And it deserves that. So Chardonnay is an interesting uh, wine because you can have a couple of different styles. You can have unoaked, or you can have oaked. You can have in between. You can have ML, malolactic fermentation, which gives it a cream, secondary fermentation, which gets to the creamier style. Or they can stop that secondary fermentation, that ML, and um, make it more on the leaner style with wood. So. Chardonnay can go everywhere, and a lot of people are looking for different versions of Chardonnay. This one has oak on it. doesn't say anything about being un -oak, so I'm guessing it has oak on it. This one rolls in at $13, so it's a good value, maybe. We'll see. Let's do some scent searching. So typical Chardonnay, what you're looking for is you're looking for pineapple, apple notes, a really strong... Uh, there can also be some buttery element that comes through from oak. Those are all things that come through on a sensory perception in a Chardonnay. And as the more you work with wines and the more you know about them, you sort of expect those things. Sometimes you get fig components on Chardonnay because the oak changes a lot in a Chardonnay's nose, as we say, what we're smelling. So let's see what we get. What sort of sense do we get on this one? Definitely buttery. I get that kind of melted butter thing with a little pineapple, kind of like they melted butter over a pineapple. And again, I don't put as much on the nose. I love smelling, if you heard me say, but I mean, as far as the actual grade goes, so many wines I've tasted have been closed aromatically, have really come to life on the palate. But this one has good aromatics. Like I said, it's pretty uh, typical of a California Chardonnay, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just you expect to get pineapple, um, melon notes, a little bit of butteriness, maybe some fig components. So this isn't like screaming at me. Um, you know, it's maybe a little cold, but like I said, people drink them cold. And that's what I want to be able to give to you is what you're going to get as a consumer when you drink it. Again, you're looking for balance of fruit, oak, acid. You don't expect Chardonnays to be as acidic as, let's say, a Sauvignon Blanc and other wine, white wines. But you want a little bit of acid because you want that to pop out. You definitely don't want anything to overpower the other. And that will affect the score. So this one um, is a little leaner. It doesn't have the rounder when you smell it. You don't, you know, you're smelling that butter, but you're not getting as much butter. It leans towards the pineapple, apple skin, a little bit of lemon zest in there. I'm getting good acid on this one. It actually has more than you get out of most Chardonnays. 
And the oak really comes through on the back end. I mean, it's like, you know there's oak in there, but it doesn't really hit you until the very back end. And it hits in a pretty serious way. It almost tastes like you're, uh, you've sucked on a piece of oak. The butter comes through on the mid-palate. This has nice balance. I don't think everybody is going to love this Chardonnay because so many people are looking for those rounder, buttery sides. But for those people that are looking for something a little leaner, they're tired of the big, oaky, buttery Chardonnays, this is a good play. I mean, it has a leanness to it that would allow it to be uh, drunk with seafood. So as a wine critic, I'm going, okay, well, I can see where this is going. I see what the winemaker is trying to do with this. I understand that. I like the acid part of it. I like the balance on the palate. I like the citrus notes. There's a little bit of minerality. I'm a little bit thrown off, not a lot, by the oakiness on the backside, but it seems to catch up to itself just a little bit, and I get kind of that green apple-y thing going on at the very end of the finish. It does have a long finish, and that's key too, like I said. How long does that linger around in the mouth? I learned a long time ago that, at least in my philosophy of critiquing wine, is to try to understand what the winemaker is trying to achieve with that wine. It may be, not be what we want, but are they achieving what I believe they are trying to get out of that wine, and how well did they do that? Well, I think this, uh, I think this was Chalon Vineyards. They had a leaner style Chardonnay in mind. They wanted a little mineral, they, have, they wanted good acid, they wanted it to be a food Chardonnay, which I think it is. This is a beautiful food Chardonnay. Go great with shellfish. So that being said, here's another B plus wine. I think the only reason I give it a B plus, and it's a strong B plus, is because of that little bit of kind of oak that kind of hits you like you're sucking on a piece of oak wood. I think that might be off-putting to some. Now, that being said, if I didn't take into consideration that as this warms up, that fruit might get a little stronger and outweigh that oak. So, strong B+, plus, maybe hedging towards A-, minus. two great whites, by the way. I like them both. I hope I helped you understand how a wine critic breaks down white wines, what they're looking for, why I gave these a B+, plus, A-. Minus. You may have figured all that out for yourself, but... That being said, I'm just trying to help you see where we're coming from. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Make a comment. Look me up at, at, at standthewineman.com. See what I'm doing on the blog there. I just posted my review of, of the year 2013. What you know happened to me. The good things. I called it a very good year. It was a good year for me. Also, uh, hook up with me at Twitter at, at standthewineman. Uh, because I like to interact with people, and that's a good platform. Love Twitter. Anyway, thanks for coming. Here's to keeping the snob out of wine.